Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at CRAM. Uh, of course, when I think of CRAM, I think of like SPAM, but it really stands for Counter, Rocket, Artillery, and Mortar. Uh, these are basically dedicated weapons that were designed to basically stop, you know, important targets from getting hit with these kinds of projectiles. Now, uh, one cool thing is, I'm looking at this turret right here, and I immediately go, sweet, um, isn't this thing like on like a hover tank from Hammer Slammers or something like that? Um, we wish we had that technology. You know, the power gun fired. Great series, by the way, if you haven't had a chance to read it. So what do these things do? And uh, basically, their purpose is to shoot down incoming uh, mortar shells and uh, incoming rockets. Now, inside of Command, this is a relatively new thing that was added. I actually believe it was like a week and a half ago. And I played with it quite a bit. And I want to kind of share some of the things that I found out when I was experimenting with it. First things first is um, what they have done here is I'm I'll scroll in a little bit. You'll see a bunch of different systems. I've got an SA-15. I've got myself an SA-22. I've got myself the good old-fashioned 35 millimeter. This is the Mantis version. Coming over here, I've got the Centurion, which is the one I've actually seen videos of this thing in action. And of course, swinging over here, we have the uh, Mantis C-RAM mod with the little Skyguard FCR, which cracks me up a little bit because those of you who know 1950s air defense go, hee hee, it's back. But um, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be shooting some things. Um, of course, if you zoom out, we're in Saipan here. You know, the reason I picked Saipan is because during World War II, uh, interestingly enough, Japanese artillery actually fired at American troops who were landing on Saipan all the way from down here, which I think is actually kind of a neat little touch on Tinian, by the way. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go ahead and take some shots, and um, we're going to see what we can shoot at and why it works and why it doesn't work, as you're going to see in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my mortar crew here. This is a 120 millimeter mortar. Pretty standard. Uh, anybody who knows mortars knows the fact that this is the big one. This one you have to break into four individual pieces and the ammunition is heavy. That being said, it's surprisingly high damage because mortars have short range, which means most of the shell can be the explodey bits. This is a pretty big shell, believe it or not. So I'm going to target my medium building here and I've got 240 rounds that I can fire at this thing. Uh, that's going to be a little disrespectful, so I'm going to fire 239. There we go. That should work perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and uh, switch back to the other team real quickly here and uh, unpause. Now, one of the downsides, of course, of any artillery crew in existence is it takes them a lifetime to, first of all, calculate where they need to aim. Then they've got to point the mortar in the correct direction. They've got to get everything loaded and ready to go. And then when they finally have all of those boxes checked, they can actually start popping these things off. So oh, there it goes. Nice. Now, what you'll notice right away, let me go ahead and pause so you can see what's going on here. This is a projectile in flight here. One of the things um, I hope they do someday is uh, they kind of clean up this graphic. I love this to death, and it's very clear what the projectile is doing and the path it's taking, but part of me almost like wants it to be like a little dot right here, but obviously we couldn't see that little dot. We're, um, let's see here, 6,200 meters up, so we wouldn't be able to see that. So this thing right now is traveling through the air, and um, from our perspective here, we can actually see this thing visually. Now, you'll notice if I grab one of these, I handy dandy any C-RAM systems, there's nothing for me to click on to actually shoot at here. I'm on F1, by the way. So if I go ahead and unpause, uh, my mortar continues taking its path, continues taking its path. Um, those people in the little building down there are looking up at this mortar shell. I actually probably couldn't see it. Let's be realistic. It'd be a little black dot you couldn't even notice. And it gets closer, and uh, we're within the effective range of all my systems. And the mortar sails right over the top of these systems and goes wham directly into the ground. Now, that was pretty embarrassing from an aiming perspective here. I think, um, see, the original target here, that was about 250 meters off, which actually for mortars, eh, that's not bad. For the first couple, that's not bad. Again, they'll go and probably be closer and closer, depending on where my uh, guy basically looking through the binoculars. But you'll see here, if I speed up time here, this mortar just, it just does its thing. Just, just kind of fires all afternoon, and my C-RAM doesn't do much. The M part of C-RAM doesn't exist. And the reason for that is, in command, these projectiles are not in-game objects. They're basically a representation of a calculation of this particular trajectory to, to this target. So there's nothing to shoot at yet. So let's go ahead and uh, restart our scenario one more time. We'll go ahead and fire back up here. Go back to red team, and uh, this time we're going to fire a rocket. So now rockets aren't different, and they actually change these, if you actually look at what the change log was talking about. Now I'm going to be generous here. I'm going to fire one rocket. <laughs> this is uh, being very, very, very generous. But it's important you see the difference between a rocket and a mortar shell here. So we'll speed up time again. Now the rocket crew, they're doing a little beep, beep, you know, kind of lining the thing up. The guy's holding down the little hydraulic lift button. And it's making this little whiz and oh, pause. So we'll notice a couple of things that are immediately different. If we switch to uh, the red team here, you'll observe the fact that this is the traditional rocket icon. But you'll notice, watch what happens when my mouse clicks on it. 
It's an actual object now. So they integrated this into the universe as an actual physical object that actually exists. And one of the cool things, if you click here, you can actually see this is the rocket and you can actually see all the details of the actual projectile. Now, if you take a look through here, they had to go through and create all of these in order to make this possible. Now, if I switch back to the other team, of course, uh, we don't know that it's a grad. The only thing we know is we're being fired at by a rocket. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of folks are like, how can you tell this from a rocket from some other types of projectiles? We'll get there. Relax. We're going to get there. So now let's go run over here real fast. So I have my handy dandy tour. And again, the tour is designed. It's a fantastic system. They call it the gauntlet. It's a great name for it. Now, if I press shift and F1 and click on this incoming rocket, you'll observe I cannot engage that rocket. Uh, there's nothing I could do. My tour is just going to sit here relaxing. As a matter of fact, when I click on the weapon itself, if you take a look at valid targets, you got missiles and guided bombs down here. That's okay. That's okay. And uh, one other thing, let me see if I can pull that for you. Yeah, that's good. Now let's go ahead and grab our other system here. This is the Greyhound. This is the Panzer. And if I click on him, nothing to fire at as well. However, watch what happens when I click on one of my CRAM systems like the Mantis here. Shift F1, go ahead and left click, ta-da! You'll notice here that it is a valid target that I can now fire at. The only thing we have an issue of here is we're a little out of range, but that's fine because this system takes no time in the universe. And as a matter of fact, when I bring it up, you'll notice the fact that we've got um, basically the same stuff in here, but it has a special little flag in here we can't see that says it can be used against rockets. So anyway, we'll go ahead and unpause here and I'll watch the rocket uh, kind of complete its trajectory. It's going to get a little high. I don't think these things go very high. These are relatively low rockets. And yes, if you're wondering how I'm tracking this rocket, I've got a radar on the mountain here to keep an eye on. So now you're going to see CRAM in action here. Now I have three different CRAM systems. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Into range. Fire. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> You're not getting anywhere in the neighborhood with that many CRAMs. That's okay, though, because um, we, we have ways of dealing with these things. So against individual targets, uh, CRAM systems are fantastic. But things get a little more challenging uh, once you attempt to saturate said targets. So let's do a 90 rockets to you. Click on you. I want you to get 90 rockets. Come to you. I'd like you to get 90 rockets as well. Fire. Now, this is one of those uh, situations where I'm going to turn my volume down there. Don't mind me. Uh, you can see that this would create a bit of a panic. Uh, we start tracking these incoming weapons, and we start programming and calculating their trajectories. Uh, our CRAM crews are sitting there. Keep in mind, these things are not ultra-automated. They're partially automated. You can see the big old radar off the phalanx here. This thing starts gliding. You know, I swear that came off of one of the uh, blowers from Hammer Slammers. I'm sorry. Go read that series. It's fantastic. And of course, this thing comes down. It's uh, raining down. It's a rocket. All these guys are sitting there going, uh-oh, as they're looking up directly. So um, let's see how this goes and uh, uh, begin. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, that didn't work very well. So as you can see, uh, one of the biggest limiting factors, that's not a word, uh, limiting factors on a CRAM system is its ability to only engage a single target at a time. It also has very, very, very limited range, which is going to mean that even though it's fairly effective, it's actually very effective against individual weapons, it, it's not going to matter if you all uh, want to sit here and saturate it. And you can see my grad is uh, doing a wonderful job of fitting everything but the target I assigned it. But it did do a pretty good job against all the soft stuff that was kind of in the neighborhood. Like you can see my little SAM sites have all been wrecked. Uh, they're all kind of wreck. And again, it's a pretty good spread there. We have about um, yeah, about 330 meters, which is pretty accurate for a rocket system. So now, of course, you're sitting here saying, well, that kind of sucked. Uh, what else is it good against? Well, luckily for us, the uh, Russian government allowed us to use a Scud missile launcher uh, left over from the war for the purposes of uh, demonstrating my next thing that we can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch one of these suckers uh, right at this building here. Keep in mind, it's a 60 seconds, 70 seconds before that rocket will actually fire. Now, this presents an interesting new problem, which I actually really, really love that they've changed inside over here in command. And that's the fact that these particular weapons now, we can no longer identify them as RVs entering the atmosphere. We identify them as fireballs, which is actually completely accurate because uh, when they enter the atmosphere... They, they get pretty hot. They get really hot. And they basically look like a streak of light as they come through the atmosphere. So anyway, we have a fireball number three. <laughs> it's on its way up. It's about 67,000 feet here. It's uh, going up pretty high. I absolutely love watching the trajectory of these projectiles, um, obviously. Um, the reason I love these is because it just, it's amazing. Because you're sitting down here on the ground and like you're like airplane altitudes. And I zoom out and you can just see this thing just slowly climbing upwards. And you can see uh, we're... We're moving, we're moving. Let's actually take a look here. Uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty high, pretty darn high. <laughs> it's 140,000 feet 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, we have our lovely little uh, CRAM systems. Of course, uh, they have about a second to fire at this incoming missile that's uh, going to be dropping from the sky. The one thing we do have going for us right now is the fact that the Scud missile is probably one of the least accurate things that we could probably have launched at us here. As a matter of fact, I would be impressed if it hits the island of Saipan. I would not be surprised if it ends up in the drink or it ends up down there on Tinian, which would be pretty embarrassing. <laughs> but we'll find out. So one of the cool things here is if I grab one of my CRAM systems, so I'll grab this one, shift F1, left click, you'll notice I actually can fire. Uh, this is a, considered a valid target, even though I'm going to have about a millisecond to take a shot at it. Uh, one of the difficult things here is this. Of course, uh, who joins in the fun here? Uh, one of my SAM sites is uh, taking a pot shot. I nah. Nah, 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 nah. We want the CRAMs. By the way, this is going to be in real time. Watch how long you have to shoot at this thing. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> As you could see, um, it was it was never going to happen. There's just no, we had, you know, two and a half seconds of a window to fire. And like our bullets physically could not get to the target in that time. So fortunately against weapons like that, we're at a heck of a disadvantage as far as engagement goes. So as you can see, they're not foolproof systems. Uh, they're pretty cool, but um, I'm not satisfied. Ah, that's a little better. <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to do our little earlier experiment again, and uh, this time, of course, I've improved our air defense slightly. So, uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to work, but it'll be pretty fun to watch. So let's go ahead and grab that uh, lovely little uh, grad down here. Press Shift F1, drag a box. Hey, they fixed it. No, 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 that was the other one. Never mind, never mind. All right, so we're going to do, I can't do math sometimes, uh, 24, that's going to be 80 each. Allocate 80. You get 80. And you get 80. There we go. What a great thing. <laughs> so um, I think we'll get the first 25 or so. I don't think we're going to get anything more than that. Because uh, once they start dropping, uh, we're never going to be able to keep up with all of them. But we're going to try anyway and see what happens. Although the fact we know roughly where this is. How? Like I must have some kind of... Oh, oh here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so of course, uh, the incoming uh, rockets. Uh, these are all rockets. We can identify them just by holding our mouse over, and we know that they're rockets. I can't read the you know manufacturer serial number off the side of them, but I know they're rockets based on their trajectory and uh, speed as they enter the atmosphere. So we've tried to stack the deck here. Um, we've got plenty of air defense now. I even threw in one of these guys, which are really really fun to play with because uh, they've got some really really cool little kind of tricks here. But I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. All right, here they come. Prepare for fireworks. Begin. Da 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 da. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh boy. Let me pause for a second here. Uh, why are we struggling to hit these guys? Um, you guys can fire at anything. Like you, you, you don't have to wait for me. Let me go ahead and uh, say this, and let me say this. I'm actually gonna let them go nuts here. Um, feel free. Oh, look at that last one. Well, uh, my original estimate was uh, closer to 25, but it looks like uh, at the end here, um, we, we blocked a few of them, but uh, it's, it's not going so well for us. It's not going so well for us. Oh, man, it, it's, it's trying. It's trying. Oh, there's another one. Ah, oh, there goes another one. So as we can see, uh, this is very, very challenging because um, we can only fire so many of these at a time. And uh, once you start saturating, once the first rocket gets through and basically splatters everything around you, you'll realize just kind of how hopeless the uh, situation goes here. And even if I were to grab these and try to like manually allocate, they're basically in panic mode because as they're trying to target that one, they've already missed that one. So then they change target to this one and they've already missed that one. And then they change, and, and it's a big disaster. Uh, they just can't fire control their way through that many weapons that quickly. I guess hypothetically, I could try to like manually allocate, like try to guess which one's going to get through, but it's the same problem in the real world. You're never going to be able to intercept that many at a time. Of course, now we have laser technology, which uh, we actually saw a couple of those fire if you were watching carefully there. But even that technology is, it's still immature. It's uh, going to have to get better with time. So my final conclusions here is they're really, really neat systems. Um, you really, really have to make sure you're close to the thing you're trying to protect the other thing is they're very, very easy to defeat because their fire control just cannot keep up. Uh, obviously, if you use multiple units like we did, it becomes a bit of a panic because one has to finish targeting that one before the next one can target that one. And it becomes kind of a nightmare of uh, trying to target all those at the same time. So that's not an optimum solution, at least at this time. Again, a little later on, you might have things like, you know, targeting priorities or command priorities or allocation priorities. Or maybe you'll have like one central computer that tells which one should fire next rather than getting overwhelmed where everybody targets the same guy. Then the next one targets, but he doesn't get it, but he doesn't fire because he's still waiting. And you can see exactly how that kind of breaks down that communication, resulting in a bunch of rockets hitting us. So again, a pretty cool system. So I'd love to see how they evolve. The mortar shell aspect of this, I'm kind of curious about that. 
because theoretically, if you can hit a mortar shell, you can also hit a shell from a battleship. And um, I don't know how well that would go, but that's part of the fun. Enjoy.